everyone. I hope you've had a wonderful weekend. We're back here um, on Turning Tuesday. Um, this week, uh, our live uh, broadcast is going to be about sharpening. So don't worry. Um, as the week goes on, I'm going to do a little bit more turning. I'd love to get some um, projects from you guys as well. So uh, we, we're going to keep doing this. It looks like we're going to be in this situation for a for at least a few more weeks. So give me some projects and we're, we're, uh, that you may be struggling with and we'll have a go at them. We just do some. Um, to that end, on Thursday, we're going to have another live um, demonstration at four o'clock. Um, I want to do a little bit of turning and then, but we're going to look at it as a bit of a QA and a as well, a bit of a question and answer session. So like I say, if you're struggling with anything, um, give us the, the, um, the questions uh, via Facebook and Insta um, and we'll go through them with you. Okay. Um, but today, now if anybody's been watching, my family are a big part of the, the watching group here. Um, like I say, we're not going to be actually making projects. We're going to be looking at how we sharpen the tools ready to make the projects. And as a tutor, I find that that is a big part of, of teaching. You must have sharp tools in order to, to improve your turning skills. So we're going to look at, um, I've got four machines here today, a variation of of uh, machine, but also a variation in, in um, sharpening techniques as well. I do fear that sometimes if you read too many books and magazines, listen to too many people, um, then you'll come out with the view that uh, sharpening tools is a bit of a black art. Well, really it's not. It's just a means to get us turning again. Um, as a, an apprentice, um, and I served five years as an apprentice, I was lucky to have a tutor with me pretty much all the time. If I was doing something wrong, he could correct me. Um, and so um, a, a five year um, uh, sort of lesson, as it were. Um, we don't need to think about hand sharpening anymore. I know a lot of you do hand sharpen. No issues with hand sharpening. Like I say, that's how I was brought up. Um, as long as the cutting edge is, cut edge is sharp, fantastic. But now modern um, jigs and some of the modern um, sharpening devices means that we can get that more perfect grind every single time. And when I say perfect grind, the, the, the aesthetically good um, or perfect grind, so the one that looks good, single facets all the way around, or, or double bevel if you need a double bevel for uh, internal bowl cutting, that sort of stuff, or double bevels on skews. It's all very, very easily done on, um, uh, on jigs. And it makes my five-year apprenticeship um, the learning to how to sharpen on that condensed down into literally about five minutes. Um, I can give a complete beginner a jig, the instructions on how to set it, and they're away sharpening perfectly every single time. So it is a little bit of an investment in um, monetary terms, but for your time saving, incredibly, incredibly um, huge amount of time it saves. So um, I'm going to treat this as if it was one of my courses um, for Axminster. Um, and we're going to start with the Tormek. And the Tormek for me um, is a nice way to start because it's quite slow. It's running about 150 revs. There's no sparks or danger or anything like that. Um, and it gives the person time to think about what they're doing. Okay, so just before we do, there's Tormex here. Let's just have a quick pan around the room, Charlie. Um, we're going to start to my right, just very quickly. Stay where you are, just pan around. Um, we're going to, um, in a minute, after we've looked at the Tormex, we're then going to go to um, this 8-inch slow speed um, grinder. Um, so this is running at about 1,400 revs. Again, um, it, what that means for us is, is um, less heat than you would get from a regular um, fast running um, grinder of about three or 4,000 revs, you know. Um, now this has two wheels on it, it's aluminum oxide and CBN. We're gonna look at, or we'll talk about CBN a little bit more um, as the, the, the demonstration goes on. Um, I've set that up with a couple of things with the Tormek. We will, we'll look at that a little bit more in a moment. So then we got the Tormek. This is gonna be my first demonstration um, on here. Um, then we're going to move around, we're going to look at the ultimate edge, so the linishing type type of um, uh, sharpening system. And then finally on to um, one of the craft range. So if you're um, a hobbyist turner, if you're just starting out, this is likely to be the sort of thing you're going to go with. And on here we've got set up um, uh, one of the woodcut true, um, true grinds. Okay, so we're going to going to look to, to use one of those as well. Again, we've got a CBM wheel set up in here. This is a, a regular uh, running, uh, regular speed. This is about 2,800, 3,000 revs. Um, so over the course of the next sort of 30 to 40 minutes, that's what we're going to, we're going to look at all of these. Now we're going to, 
play around with camera angles a little bit. I want you to get close into the action, but I also think it's really important to show you how we set these things up. Otherwise, you know, you're at home on your own, you won't have a clue. So let's have a look. Um, starting off with the Tormek. So if you stay where you are just for the moment, Charlie, and we're not gonna do any sharpening just yet. Um, but for me, for a wood turner, um, there's, a, there's several bits of kit that you need, or I think you, you need. Um, first of all, we've got uh, the multi-jig. Now the multi-jig, if I come in a little bit closer, you stay where you are, Charlie. Um, if I show you this, and the multi-jig is used for basically skew chisels, parting tools, roughing gouges, um, anything that can't be done with a bowl and spindle gouge jig. Um, so for wood turners, that's a really essential pit. We're gonna use that to sharpen skews in a moment. Um, we've then got um, the TTS or the TTS 100. That's the tool setter, Tormek tool setter. And this is crucial if you're a wood turner to setting everything up um, the same each time. So that's the TTS 100. And then we've got our actual bowl gouge jig. Okay, again, for a wood turner, a central piece of kit. That's the bowl gouge jig, this one. Sorry, down. Okay. Um, and then one other piece of kit, I'll show you this. It is actually part of the multi-jig, but in its rough and gouge, gouge guise. So there's a little saddle in there. That all comes as part of the main multi-jig kit. Um, that's for our rough and gouges. So, like I said, I'm going to start this as if it were a course um, and go over um, the machine and how we would start. So, before you come in too close, what we have here, so we have a, a movable bar. So this is where the jigs attach. We, this is what makes it so good, and um, modern jigs so good, really, because once you've got the jig set on the um, in the equipment, it can't go anywhere. So you're then um, led by the jigs, as it were. So that's a separate bar. You can put, position the bar in here or in the top. Um, um, most sort of wood turning um, sharpening gets done with a bar in the horizontal mode. Um, wood working and carving, we tend to have it up here. We also have it up here. Um, if we were going to true the wheel, so doing a lot of bowl gouges all day, I end up dipping the wheel, it's inevitable it's going to happen. So if you want to do planar, um, planar irons, um, cartridge chisels, that sort of thing, even skew chisels, you need to flatten it off. And so that you, you would use then the, the truing device. So that's an industrial diamond just here, um, and that literally slots over the top, locks in position, and by winding these wheels, you wind that diamond across the surface, keeping it flat all of the time. Now, the T4 at the moment is coming free with one of those, so that's an offer that's open for the rest of this month. I know the T8, which is this machine, the bigger one, the T8 is also coming with the rotary base, so the, the, the pivoting base, plus the rubber tray as well, and that's about 80 quid's worth of freebies in there. So there's a couple of really good offers going on at the moment with the Tormek. Um, but that's not why you're here. You want to see us do something. So let's put that bar back in the front. We're going to start with the bowl gouge because it's the one that people struggle with the most. You got any questions there, Charlie? I can see, no, okay. Um, ask questions if you've got them. Hopefully I'm going to fulfill them as we go through this demonstration. So your first thing you'll need to know is how to set the thing up ready for your gouges. If you're a complete beginner, you don't know what to set it up. And all I would say there is just keep the angle that's on the, um, the chisel when you buy it. It's generally between sort of 55 and 45 degrees. Um, in my workshop here and in my workshop in the, at the skill centre, in Accidents the Skill Centre, we're using 55 degrees as a back angle. Now let me just show you that 55 degrees is that angle there. That's the one I'm talking about. Okay. So that's the angle that we're set. Now that makes it a good all-rounder, not too twitchy, not too, um, doesn't bite too much, that sort of thing. If people start talking about um, detail gouges, that sort of thing, the angle will creep, up, creep, creep back quite a long way. It can be up to sort of 40, um, uh, 40 degrees, you know, it can be quite acute. So um, think about that. If you're struggling with a bowl gouge, especially making those last few cuts on the inside of a bowl, um, 55 degree works. It's a really nice one. Um, and then, of course, the coupling that up with maybe coming over and more of like an, an Aylesworth style ground, bringing those um, top wings over a little bit further, that would also help you. Um, so we're going to work with that 55 degrees. So, um, again, Tormek on any jig that you get from Tormek does have a fantastic list 
of different um, profiles that you can use. Um, and I use this one all the time in teaching. It's probably, for me, it's one of the best um, publications in terms of, of teaching someone how to sharpen. And this is just the bowl gouge section. There's sections for every tool you can think of in there. So I'm using here, it's, um, it's this position. So I think it's time to bring the camera in a little bit now, Charlie. And we'll have that, uh, that angle we spoke about earlier. Lovely, nice and close. I bring it right the way over as close as you can get it in. All right, so this is the angle that we're gonna go for. Okay, so we're on number four. So that's given me three bits of information. It's saying JS, now that stands for jig setting. Jig setting position four. We'll do that in a minute together. P stands for protrusion. That's in metric, so 65 mil protrusion of the tool through the jig. And hole A is referring to the TTS 100. So there we have, we, all the, we have all of this same information we've got here, printed here as well, so it's all there. So hole A, hole A, it can't be any easier. So let's do this. Um, get one of our gouges, we'll put it in the, in the tool. So let's, yeah, here we go, look. Now, I don't know whether you can see that, but that's, you can see that's an unsharpened tool at the moment. I've got some of that wet timber from last week still on there. So we'll set that up in our jig. So let's start off with getting the jig in the right position. So jig setting, uh, we're jig setting four. So again, I'm gonna take some guidance here. Can you see the numbers there? It starts zero, two, pivot that a little bit. There we are, there are the numbers, zero to six. And then on the back, you've got an arrow with a notch. Um, and it's a nice graduated um, jig, so it actually clicks in position. So I want jig setting four, which is right there. And that can be done up. Then we want 65 mil protrusion through the jig. And that tool setter that we're talking about, that uh, TTS 100, this one. So this has those um, dimensions. So it has a 55, 65, 75 mil mark. So I want 65. All right, so 65 mil through the jig. Okay, that also acts as a little bench hook as well. So you can put it on the bench and use it um, if you wish, so 65 mil protrusion. Then lastly, we got to think about the wheel. The wheel wear, wears all the time, so this distance will change unless it's constantly checked. So on my little manual here, it says hole A. So hole A, okay, that's gonna slip onto that bar. Now I have to make both of these two metal discs touch the wheel at the same time. And that gives me the same dimension, oh, sorry, the same distance. There we are, they're both touching. So dead easy. And once you've got that set, it's just a case of actually sharpening. It's rotating that tool around. And as a gentle touch, you no need to press too, too hard. So around, and then I'm gonna come all the way over and around. And I'm coming fully down, touching the bar on each side. All the way over. And you can jiggle this if you want it slightly different. They need a, a little less protrusion, more protrusion, or um, just alter where the bar is. They can hear there's no there's not a huge amount of noise, there's not a huge amount, well, there's no sparks and there's no heat. This is running in water, so we're getting a lovely cool sharpen. We're also getting a very fine sharpen. It's a beautiful finish to this. And this is usual straight off the stone, but if I wanted to improve it, I can just go straight over to the honing wheel, which is running this side here. And that's a leather honing wheel, which we just add a little bit of um, honing paste to and then that will polish the back. So let me just show you that one. There we go. 
So you can see the type of sharp, you can see how dirty it was when we first started, but now how clean and single faceted that is. Now, if you wanted a double bevel, so just take the heel away, all you would do, um, again, is just bring that, either more protrusion or bring the bar further away, and that will grind away a little bit more of your bevel for the inside of bowls if you were getting any ridges and things. So dead, dead, easy way of setting up. We're gonna stay here just for the moment while I do a few other tools, and then we're just gonna pop to the um, slightly, um, slightly bigger machine, the um, slow speed grinder. So that's a bowl gouge, that's a bowl gouge, nice and simple. Whilst we've got the bowl gouge jig though, let's look at spindle gouges. So spindle gouges, much shallower flute. This is a little um, 3.8 spindle. Uh, much shallower through a flute. This is a 45 degree bevel angle on the back. So again, I'm going to use the same tool, the same jig. We're going to just clamp down onto that. Now, it tells me in the book, so we're down here now, uh, 45 degree bevel angle, jig setting two, 65 degree protrusion, and hole A again. So hole A, we're in the right place. Jig setting needs to be changed to position two. There we go. 65 mil protrusion through the jig. And then we're back to it, same thing. Again, just a gentle downward pressure from my left hand and just a pivot from the right. To start with, it's certainly in classes, I see um, a lot of people putting a lot of downward force on the handle. Of course, as soon as you do that, you lift the chisel tip off. So it's slightly, um, a slightly different way of thinking when it comes to sharpening in a jig-based system. But once you understand that, it's so, it's so much easier. I'm not doing anything apart from rotating that chisel over. The, the angle is being sorted for me. There we are. Once again, let's just get that nice and close for you. You can see a single faceted little uh, grind there. So dead, dead easy. It won't take too long if you use the same sharpening system um, to keep all of those the same. Now. Let's have a look at a roughing gouge because I want to go over to the multi tool next, or the multi jig. Multi jig in its two forms. So skew chisel form, okay, roughing gouge form. They both come as one. So all we're going to do, the book will tell you 75 to 100 mil protrusion. I'll be honest, in practice, I haven't found it makes a bit of difference. So turn the machine off. There's my roughing gouge. And on the multi-jig, we always have the long face forward. Okay, and then certainly for skew work, you can turn it over and you've got a bit much bigger um, surface area there. Um, but roughing gouges are around about 45 degrees um, to their grind. So to start with, just to set this up, I'm just gonna use a little bit of ink on the back, so a little bit of permanent marker, just to give me a rough idea. Um, Roughly set the bar where I think it should be. Just clamp one down. Just check to see where that sharpening look. I could do with going just a touch closer. You see that mark just where it's grinding. So now that looks pretty close. So let's have a go. And it's a rotation. Just rotating the chisel around. So you can see the fresh grind coming. We're not quite touching the center at the moment. So I'm just gonna come a little bit further back. Again, if you're doing this all the time, same jig, same system, it'll be a couple of passes and you'll be there. There we are, that's getting closer now. There 
There we are. So I think you might get the idea from that. Can you see that, that fresh grind? And with a roughing gouge, I try to keep it as flat as possible. Um, remember, roughing gouges are only intended for spindle work, so I don't want to be using them on a bowl because they're flat. Okay, and it's designed to take a lot of material away quickly. So there we are, that's your roughing gouge. Now I want to go to a skew next. Don't worry, we are going to repeat all of this, or not all of it, but uh, show you how we would use it on the other machines. So my skew angle, as in this angle here, is set to about 25 degrees-ish. I also try and set this angle, the actual ground angle, to about the same on most of my skews. So just in order to understand this, this um, jig, long face forward. I said this, this a little bit earlier, just long face forward. Um, and so then the skew goes through. And let's position him up. Again, if we follow the manual, the manual will give us a um, amount of protrusion. I tend to use about 50 to 75 mil protrusion and then just set it with that same technique we've just used with our pen. Um, it, I find it a little bit quicker for me, to be honest. So let's do that. A um, little bit of a little bit of pen on there. Set it by eye first. Now the, the bar is going to go a lot closer than it has been for gouges. So There now, let's try that one. I think that's going to be pretty close. It is close. We just want to bring that bar further away. Just a little bit. Try that. Right, I'm going to try that. Let's, let's go for it. And then it's just a case of back and forward. you can see already we're getting that lovely where am i there we are lovely clean finish that'll be enough so once you've done that you can turn them over angle should be the same nice finish and again double bevel sometimes on a skew so we either move the bar back or do it by hand on a, um, a little diamond file okay so nice and straightforward now my own skew the Colwyn Way signature skew is not a problem I have had questions before and oh how they don't work with the torment well they do they fit in no problem let me just I'm just going to quickly show you one same position They nip up in the same way. Yes, it is an angle in there, but it works. Show the camera in a minute, this is in. Okay, nice and central and just pinched up. So it still grips quite nicely on that front edge um, and it certainly grinds nicely. I'm not gonna spend too much time trying to find the angle, but just to prove what I'm saying, over we go so exactly the same style of sharpening okay very simple good right so whilst we're still there with this um, this jig we'll do a couple of final chisels and then we're going to move on to the other systems I'm briefly going to talk about those systems now you've seen the jigs working um, we're gonna going to just run through the other machines okay so first one we're looking at on is the next part of the multi-jig so the same part that we use for the roughing gouges let's do let's do beading and parting tool that's a nice one now all of the other tools passing tools beading and passing tools fit in here in the same way that little grub screw there or thumb screw fits in on top with these just make sure that you've got everything up nice and through, myself a bit more protrusion there. And I tend to always with these, just 
black the back. Just to give you a little visual indicator as to where everything is. Again, parting tools, you can have um, a double bevel on a parting tool. We use it quite a lot. I use it a lot in teaching, actually. Um, if someone's just starting to roll a bead and they want to, um, and they, they're sort of struggling, put a secondary bevel on, right on the very front face. Um, and that will just sort of ease the chisel down a little, calms it down, stops it from being quite so bitey which is important because you're trying to calm people's nerves down as much as anything and catches don't do good for your nerves. There we go, just a little wiggle back and forward. Sometimes if you plant the chisel down hard without moving it, without wiggling it back and forward, you can sometimes get a bias grind. So I encourage people, once they put it down, just, just a little bit of a wiggle back and forward. And that'll sort of look, that lovely grind already appearing there. Okay, again, just turn over and you'll get the same angle on the other side. Okay. Um, look, I think that's going to be it for um, the actual jigs. So I think I'd like to now show you and move on to some other machines. And we're just going to do a little bit of sharpening on each of the machines to show you. So, um, Charlie, if you could come back, let's have a look at this machine first. So we're gonna look at the trade machine. I'm just gonna jiggle spaces with um, with Charlie, places with Charlie a minute. There we are. So I wanna to talk to you about the wheels that we have on here. So we've got two wheels on this machine. Charlie, just come back and show both wheels at the same time a minute, mate. There we go. So the, the, um, the machine itself, um, comes with a grey carborundum, so ignore the CBM wheel just for the minute. Comes with a grey carborundum wheel on one side, it comes with an aluminium oxide wheel on the other. Aluminium oxide was um, made or invented, I suppose, um, just to run a bit cooler than our, our traditional brown or grey carborundum. There is nothing wrong with a carborundum wheel, you just have to realise that steel will become hotter if you use it. Aluminium oxide was the next thing to keep the steel a little bit cooler. It will still make your steel hot, so you have to use um, water um, to keep things cool while you're um, sharpening. It's prevention rather than cure, so don't wait for your steel to go blue and black. Keep it cool to prevent it from becoming blue or black. If you think about it, what you're doing, you've spent a lot of money on a good high-speed steel tool, and then you're ruining that temper, that hardness, by making it harder and more brittle um, by blackening and blueing it. So keep the steel nice and cool. There is no rush in sharpening, take your time. Um, just quickly, we'll go over the anatomy of the bench grinder first before we then go into our CBM. So what we have is a spark guard. Spark guards are that, they protect your eyes from spark. That doesn't mean to say that you don't protect your eyes other than just the spark guard. So in a minute, when I start my sharpening, I'll also have my visor on, really important. The other thing, if you're doing a lot of sharpening, is don't forget your lungs. This is gonna produce aluminum oxide dust. Um, this will produce um, steel dust, as, in, as will both. It's not captured in water like the, the Tormek. So think about that dust in the air. It's an aluminum oxide carborundum. All of those things are abrasive dust, and they will damage your lungs if they get in there. And you don't wanna be taking in steel filings either. All right, so when you're um, doing a lot of sharpening, protect your lungs. Eyes from your visor, spark guard needs to be in place. And if your spark guard's in place, so's the spark arrester, this one here. And this is designed to be nice and close to the wheel. Stops any big lumps, any big debris um, from coming up. And always make sure that your side guards are fitted. If they're not fitted, then if something, again, worst case scenario, something goes wrong, a wheel explodes, then you're not protected. So please be, make sure that that's happening. Um, so spark guards, spark arresters, um, and guards fitted. Okay, so let's move from the aluminum oxide onto the CBN, the cubic boron nitrate. So this is a steel wheel. This is 180 grit. This is the closest thing I found to the fine sharpen that we get from a tourmate. I love this wheel. Um, 180 grit, this one. R this machine's running about 1400 revs. So I just want to, to, sh um, to do a bowl gouge for, uh, for you just to show you how, how similar um, a sharpen you're going to get. But look what we've done. This is um, a setup called the BGK400. It's a Tormek product, and basically it means that you can use all the Tormek jigs 
on your bench grinder. It's independent, look, from the actual bench grinder itself. You get a metal platform. In the case of this machine, because it's an eight inch, we've had to just, and this is in the manual, um, just put an extra block in there. But if you've got a six inch one, it goes straight to a baseboard. Always use a baseboard, because then you can move it around anywhere and clamp it down. Um, turn to the baseboard, and then all the same rules apply um, to setting up your jigs. So let's do a bowl gouge quickly. Um, and then we can move on. So we'll, let's get a bowl gouge right, I am done. So I'm gonna reach in front of the camera a minute. There we are, that's an undone one. So I'm just gonna grab the jigs and the setup. If you remember on mine, I'm gonna to stick to what I'm using at the moment. So that's going to be position four on my jig, 65 mil protrusion. luck 65 mil protrusion got that first time that was good and then hold a setting up in exactly the same way there we are on with my visor Remember, this is now running about about 1800. Sorry, no, beg your pardon, about 1400. Now, one thing to notice here: this is this is a fast machine, slower than a conventional grinder, but you would expect to see sparks. We're not getting sparks, maybe the odd occasional one. And listen to, how, listen to how smooth that is as well. Now, by now, if this was carborundum or aluminum oxide, I would have had to have quenched that um, chisel tip. There we are now. I'm not going to well, I'm not going to touch it. It's hot, too hot to actually too hot to physically keep my finger on. But if that again, aluminium oxide would have burnt me by now. Um, so that's how cool it's keeping the chisel tip. And again, look at how clean that grind is. Single bevel because we're in the same G. So it's a really really nice way of sharpening that one. And you're straight on to uh, once again straight on to um, to turning. Just very very quickly, let's just show you the difference between that side and the aluminium oxide. So we're gonna come over to the other side now, Charlie. Let me just slow that wheel down by doing a little bit more sharpening on this side. Obviously, um, CBN, they are a steel wheel, so the machine will run for a little bit longer. So just use that time to keep sharpening. There we are. Um, Big setup, so I'm not going to change that. All I'm going to do is just adjust the wheel to suit. Again, hole A. And I use this for teaching all the time, simply because, it's like the tool mat, um, it means that I can leave them alone to sharpen, the students alone to sharpen, and then they then have the confidence the the jigs are already setting you your body position in the correct position. Now look at the difference, we've got sparks. And obviously sparks are gonna generate heat. So just be aware of that, you need to quench more often. And it's a gentle touch with sharpening, if you press and pr uh, put a lot of pressure on the, the grindstone, you're gonna heat up ever so quickly, you put undue pressure on the machine, just a gentle touch is all you need, okay? There we are. Okay, right, I think we're gonna move on. We're gonna go over, we're gonna start first with the ultimate edge. So the linishing type of sharpening system. Let's take that one off for a minute. And we're gonna set up in the same way. Um, 
Now this is slightly different. Um, I use this to experiment with shapes quite a lot. Um, I enjoy using this one. Again, it's a similar sort of thing. Um, not to the tour, it's a similar thing to um, CBN where you get much fewer sparks, less heat. Um, and on this model here, I can control the speed as well. So I've got full, um, um, full range of speed. I'm gonna be around about sort of 550 revs on my, um, my high speed steel tools. Um, you've got your setter back here. Okay, so you can adjust wherever you position it. You can also adjust how close you become. And this is a great one if you wanna just to put a slightly different edge on. So let's work out my angles. Again, I tend to use um, a set angle, or sorry, set position um, of 30 mil. And the measurements are back here. So I use 30 mil and then just adjust my protrusion to get it exactly where I want it. Um, again, this is an abrasive wheel, uh, sorry, an abrasive um, uh, belt. So you have to protect your eyes. I'm gonna have, and my preference this is, I'm gonna have the belt going away from me, okay? It's just, I prefer, I feel that I get a better, uh, better edge that way. So, clean on. So I've made a slight adjustment there, a little bit closer, a little bit further down just to get more of that flat. So we've got the same angle, I'm still on big setting four. get this nice and close again because that produces a beautiful finish and again we're straight on to turning there's no messing around and certainly at the moment you've probably got a little bit of time you can go through all of your chisels and you can get them all lovely and razor sharp and it's not it also the other thing i find when you've got a good jig setup you're not wasting time you're not wasting time away from the lathe you you, you can sharpen it your tools nice and quickly um, as you blunt them so it's not a session at the beginning it's a session during as well so you know 30 seconds you've got a lovely sharp chisel again okay charlie we're going to go to the final grinder now so this is the craft range of grinder this is the ac um, 200 it's a giveaway um, 200 is the um, diameter and then WSG, um, which is slow grinder, okay? 200 mil and slow grinder. Perfect position, Charlie. Now on this one, I've got two jigs set up. We've got a flat plate jig. So again, the woodcut product here. And then we've got the and the true grind. True grinds are, are ever so simple, very much like the one that I've just been using. Um, that's the true grind system. I'm using a slightly different recipe on this one. Um, and again, I've marked everything to, so I remember and so the students remember. 60 mil protrusion. So I, instead of 65 that I was just using, I'm using 60 mil. Um, and I'm using um, 100 mil protrusion here. This is giving me my distance um, in basically the positioning of where the, the little cup sits for, um, for the jig itself. So 100 mil away from this position. Jig setting six on my true grind and 60 mil protrusion of the tool. Again, I'm using a CBN wheel. Um, and this one, I believe again, it's 180 grit. Um, on this side, it's slightly coarser. On the aluminum oxide side, I'm use, I generally use for scrapers and things like that. So I've got that um, uh, set to uh, a much coarser wheel. And I think that one's around about 60 grit uh, on that side. Uh, but let's sharpen another gouge. Uh, which one shall we grab this time? Let's go for, let's go for, 
I'm trying to go all, going through all of my chisels to be quite honest, so, I, so they're all sharpened at the same time. Um, and I'm going to do the same thing here. We're going to roughly lock them in position first. Okay, and then I've just positioned that little block there to give me my my correct uh, protrusion. So 100 mil we've got here, six on the setter or on the jig itself, position six. Bring down the guards. And this one takes a little bit longer to wind down. So with it running, and it's gonna purr once it gets up to speed, with it running, I'm then gonna go onto a, um, a scraper as well. So here it is, a little bit of time to start spark up. This is one of my favorite craft um, grinders, this one. And it's, you need one of this size to run that, that heavy um, CBM wheel. But you hear how much it purrs when it's, when it's going. Um, so here we go, let's sharpen this one. Spark guard in position. Remember this is running much quicker than the other machine over the other side. This is running around about 2,800 revs. And also the surface speed is quicker because we've got 8 inch wheels, you know. Now, I just want to show you that because that, if I get it in the right position, there we are. I want to just show you how clean that is. Now, what I've got to be careful of here is when you're sharpening is you're not producing any hooks. I just noticed a little hook coming here. You never want to hook the front and the back. You want to have either a straight or very, very slight convex there for, for, to make it ideal um, in use. Okay, but there again, single facet ever so quick. Um, no heat because of the uh, CBN. Okay, one last chisel lot I'm going to go over is good old scraper. Everybody loves a scraper and hates a skew. Um, there's my scraper, that's a round nose scraper. We're just going to come over to the aluminium oxide side, Charlie. Just on, that's the focus. Beautiful. Thank you. Okay. Okay, and now I've already set this platform, so I have cheated. I spent a little bit of time setting this platform up, but then it is a case of, again, it's a gentle cut. Again, look at the difference. Those sparks that are now being produced off of an aluminium oxide wheel. So, same with, same with carbon on them. And again, you can see the the single, single um, bevel on the back. Okay, again, razor sharp, those little hooks are coming beautifully. Okay, so, I think that's covered. Most of the um, sharpening systems that uh, you'll likely encounter, um, and also your preference. Um, for a long time, as an apprentice uh, wood turner, I was hand sharpening on a bench grinder running about 4,000 revs, and it worked. We made it work. Um, it's all about a gentle touch. Um, with a fast running machine, the harder you press, um, the, the more heat you're going to produce. So just touch very gently. Um, now, with all the jigs, like some Tormek, True Grind, all those sorts of things. Um, sharpening really has become a lot easier than it used to be. Just give it the time. Um, the amount of people I've spoken to that say that they have a, um, a, a jig, but they just don't know how to use it, give it time. We have time at the moment. That's one thing that we are um, lucky to have. We've got lots of time. So play with these, practice. And please, if you ha have any questions, please ask us. Um, don't forget, like I said, um, Thursday's gonna be a Q&A session. If you've got a project that you're struggling with and you'd like me to give it a go, please say. Um, and also look to give me some project ideas for next week as well. Um, this was a little bit of a departure from making things, because I know it does cause a few problems, um, but we're gonna get back to that making things um, for, for the next uh, few days. 
So again, guys, I hope you've enjoyed um, today. Again, thank for your support. Thanks for, for, um, for viewing again at, at uh, four o'clock. We're sticking at the same time. Um, and so my next session um, is right back here, four o'clock on Thursday. I hope to see you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.